Hola community, welcome to Lender Today, episode 231. It's been a while since the last time we saw each other. I took a little break from the live streams because I had to focus on Blender 3.6 LTS on the release notes. But before that, we actually, uh, we were traveling. Part of the team went to Annecy for the biggest animation festival in the world. And we had a booth there where we welcome people from the industry, studios, students, everyone that uses Blender. It's 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 always a highlight of the year for me because I, I yeah we never get to see people from all over the world talking about grease pencil mainly and anim animation in general. It's super nice, super inspiring, can highly recommend. Other than that, we um, after that, actually, uh, last week also, we went to PenPod Fest, a conference in Barcelona that is around the software PenPod, a, um, a, a tool for designers. And it was the first time I gathered with other, uh, we were the, with the there, we gathered with other uh, designers from open source projects. It was super, super nice. But OK, let's back. Let's go back to Blender a bit because I have to cover three weeks, four weeks of, of changes in, in one episode. So make yourself some tea, some uh, mate if you like it, or something nice to relax first. I mentioned Annecy. There is a blog post on blender.org, but also if you're, I mean, subscribed to this channel, you might have seen the video, recap video uh, from the Annecy trip, which is. It's a nice music, and you get to see the behind the scenes. Actually, I I, I shot these videos. We were we are on the day we arrived with uh, Francesco. There was uh, Simon there. It was uh, Bo also building the booth. Uh, we took these these tables from th these are the tables where the people from Big Pack Bunny back in 2007 were working on and then we made Sintel and Tears of Steel and all the open movie projects people were having lunch at the tables that we brought there because you know you have to carry history some history with you um I, you can read more about it in the blog post also there was a, a breakfast in uh, a breakfast <laughs> There was always breakfast but every day, but there was a blender breakfast where uh, people from studios, like uh, from the industry, were invited to get together and talk about what is, uh, how is blender going on in the pipeline aspect of it? How does it work with other software? How can you make blender be part of that pipeline? So that was also pretty neat to connect. And I think we're gonna do it again, maybe uh, of course, next year for sure. But even at the Blender conference, which, by the way, um, I don't, I don't think it's there yet. But we are going to be announcing the sale for tickets for Blender conference this week. So make sure you get yours because last year we sold out in less less than a month, in a few weeks. So yeah, make sure you get it because it's gonna be on the same place, uh, on the same building, same time of the year, same everything. So you know how crowded it can get, how cozy it can get. Get your tickets as soon as as soon as you can. Um, other than that, I think we are good to move into more updates. The if, if you're subscribed to this channel, you may have seen the uh, very nice video for um, the release that happened. I don't know if you heard about it. Blender 3.6 is out, but the um, 3.6 real, which has amazing people were super happy to see it uh, back. I'm glad that that happened. And the video that was published on this channel by Jonathan Lample from CG Cookie, which thank you once again, John, for making such a nice video. Um, the this video is accompanied with other videos from the studio, which if you are, you probably you may have. have been seen because they were on the other channel on the blender studio channel one video to learn about simulation nodes how to what, what are they and how to use them but also human based meshes which is a new uh, asset bundle that comes with blender and you can find on the download page demo files right at the top human based meshes this uh, is a some ready to made ready to sculpt meshes that you can get and they don't come bundled with blender because there are several hundred megabytes because they are detailed and doesn't make sense to make blender heavy just for that um, but for the time being until blender gets something 
like you can click and download the assets for the time being you need to download it by hand but go use them it's, it's public domain cc0 so you can do whatever you want with them other than uh, by the way this is made by uh, the blender community and the blender studio it's a uh, both i think that i think that's it i think that's it let's let's see what is what is new in blender because we haven't seen what's new in blender 3.3.6 in a while but uh, this is the first episode where everything is going to be 4.0 4.0 is a it's a future so every feature it's going to be 4.0 actually there are two features that were removed from blender 3.6 on the last last minute on the last few days um because they were not there yet which is good now we managed to to only release what we are confident with shall we start animation section animation section oh by the way the list of today i have to cover f like three or four weeks so i i haven't seen many of the features that i'm going to show you today so you're gonna get a very candid reaction of me so to speak because i haven't seen it yet i haven't seen it i i, I basically just uh gather all the changes and we are going to read about them together <laughs> Let's start with A for animation. NLA, vertical reorder. Allow NLA strips to be vertically reordered. Other than drag and drop, that was possible before. NLA strips can now be dragged through other strips and locked tracks. Oh, like on top of them, because now before you had to like put them up and then back. Nice. That's, that's a pretty nice one. Thank you. Now let's see if there is some image here, some overview. Um, there was a, a, a workshop here last uh, last week. Ah, nice. You can put them on top and then go... Like the sequencer. Um, there was a workshop, animation workshop, last week here. So I wonder if they are going to write something on the code blog or like a recap. Um, it's always good to see what are the outcomes of these workshops organized here at the Blender Studio. Blender HQ. The next change goes as follow change channel selection key preferences in industry compatible key map um, include changes in the preferences to extend and extend range oh this is to this is more like a like a fix something that was missed for the industry compatible key map channel selection keys from a we go to b4 compositor in the compositor there is a number of changes Ooh, nice I missed this. It was last month. Oh, nice. Compositor. First steps to use the real-time compositor for renders. Yes. So the speed of the real-time compositor, or also known as GPU compositor. I don't think we should call it real-time because it nothing is real-time once you make it complex enough, right? But it's GPU-based. Um, the option is actually under experimental in the preferences you have to enable experimental compositors then choose the real-time GPU execution mode in the node editor sidebar only supports combined pass input and the render result combined output no viewer nodes yet no file output and no node previews yet more than that however this is Kind of amazing because let's let's see let's let's open today is gonna be a long episode because i i am curious about everything that was added i was disconnected from everything for weeks um just as you probably or maybe if you follow the the dev talk threads maybe you know more than i am experimental compositors option is enabled in the experimental section which as we know has to be enabled um it only shows up once you have developer extras setting option uh, sorry uh, enabled from the interface section um experimental compositors then in the compositor we should have an options panel and then execution mode tile full frame or real time gpu nice so everything else is uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't apply so it's grayed out but Neat. So, very, very welcome. You, the speed is a thousand X. I don't know what I'm going to use for the release notes as a number. So the graph is going to be insane uh, to compare with the real, with the regular compositor. 
Um, new filter in town. Uwa had a filter has been implemented at some time ago in last month, actually a few days after the last episode of Lender Today. So uh, maybe many people are already familiar, but if you're not, it looks like this. Basically adds this painterly effect on your images. I tested it uh, back when this was added and it was a bit slow. Um, but I'm happy to see that after this change, it was actually um, uh, made faster. It went from 14.7 seconds on a, on the CPU at, at a, like around 4K size, pretty nice, from 15 seconds to 4 seconds, more or less, for the full frame compositor. And the tile compositor, the default, went from 50 seconds to 15 seconds-ish. Not too bad. Okay, quick. So I should try this again because the last time I tried it, I was a bit turned uh, off by how slow it was, but it's cool to see it coming, getting faster. This effect, by the way, it's one of the uh, requirements that the team of the Blender Studio had, in, uh, had requested for the upcoming film Gold, the Project Gold, which has been announced a while back here. Project Gold, the next Blender open movie um, project. It has uh, this painterly-ish look that hopefully will be achieved with this. I hope it can be implemented in the GPU compositor at some point, although this is very CPU based. So maybe this is something that could be added at the end of the pipeline to not slow down the GPU. Um, other changes related to this filter are the ed improved the edge detection of Kuwahara filter. Compute edges of image once based on luminance instead of all the three channel. This also gives a modest performance improvement, actually, even yeah, faster. 8% faster. Measured on an Intel i9 CPU using a uh, what is this? Is it this is like a portrait 4K image almost? Less than 4K. What is the ish? Um <laughs> Very particular size so for testing. Ah, oh, you can't see it because of my face. There you go. Uh, 1920 by 3999. Um, after that, all the changes that I have to mention. Okay, no, when, one more. Um, cache. No, this is also for the real-time compositor. Okay, now let's go back and switch completely to the real-time compositor. The viewer nodes are finally supported in real-time compositor. This also was done a few weeks ago. I thought I mentioned this in the past, but no. Viewer node. This has been... Um, yeah, it was a bit weird to not see the viewer node. It, it would only work with the with the compositor output. Now it is. Now it works. This exper the, uh, the experimental render GPU compositor was also extended to support the viewers. While support for the file output nodes was added, it remains unimplemented. Okay, so support was added, but it's not implemented. There is logic in there somewhere, I bet. The other change is that passes has been added for the non-viewport real-time compositor. So all the other compositors. The... Sunbeams node has been added to the real-time compositor. Another node that gets added to the support list. Um, the implementation is not identical to the existing CPU implementation, but it's very close. So keep in mind that renders might look different, will look different for sure, between CPU and GPU. The next change is support for the movie distortion node in the real-time compositor. Again, this makes it closer the the, the the movie distortion node is used by when, when you're using doing motion tracking for example the most then another change is the cache render pass gpu textures neat store per render per render pass in the render result caches are clear when starting rendering to make more memory available to gpu render that's so cool caches are clear on UI changes when no compositing node editor and no image editor with the render result or the viewer image node is visible. 
so efficient. Store three channels, RGB passes as such, and the alpha, and set the alpha one for in, in the shader. This is an intermediate step between, well, before implementing the GPU backed image buffer to improve performance and figure out cache eviction. Wow, so much work. And by Brecht also. When, when does Brecht sleep? He's working on every area in Blender. We, what would we do without him? The next um, feature, it's support for node previews in the real-time compositor. This patch adds support for the node previews in the real-time compositor. Only the node operations have previews for now. Shader nodes like the mix RGB do not have previews implemented yet due to require sizable changes in the node compiler. This is a bit confusing because it's here he's talking about shader nodes. But the title says real-time compositor. So I wonder what does it mean? Um, I think node previews are only available in shading nodes, right? Not even. Hmm. So what is what does it mean? Depends on another comment. Okay. Hmm. Ah, this other comment. That add node previews for shader operations. In the real-time compositor. But why? Oh, because shader means... It's not, it's not render shaders. It's shaders as in GPU shaders. Okay, it's a bit confusing for the... As a, as a user. As a as in development, everything you draw on the screen is a shader. So, makes sense. But yeah, don't mix it with the actual cycles slash EV shaders. Another node gets added support for the real-time compositor. This time is the keying node for keying, for replacing your backgrounds with stuff. And then I, and the other two changes are related to caching. Cache the GPU context for repeated executions on performance improvements on the real-time compositor and last but not least the another improvement on performance for the render compositor the real-time compositor for repeated executions nice that's so cool because this is improving the real-time compositor which later will replace the cpu compositor that is used nowadays for regular renders so Faster everything. 4.0 is gonna be nuts. Really. Grease Pencil 3.0. Light linking. Real-time compositor. Faster. Well, not real-time. Compositor in general. Faster. Asset shelf. I don't know. It's gonna be huge. The next uh, section. Actually, we are, we're done with the compositor. The next section is core. In the core... Well, everything is core. But this is really core. As in the um, reading of a, of a blend file. So reading of a blend file is now faster. The undo step is also should be faster, about two, three times faster, and it does not don't do remapping anymore, which takes the whole read undo step process about 20% faster. Didn't we share, we didn't we talk about it? I think, oh yeah, this was on the day of the release. So I actually, I already mentioned this, so never mind. I mentioned it last week, opening files is now faster thanks to changes in reading files the section the next section also with c is curves <laughs> for performance there has been several improvements in performance for curves for example by sharing the position array for single points this case it went on a test case with 90,000 poly curves it reduced the conversion times from 1.7 to 1.3 milliseconds so slightly faster but it, again this is in milliseconds so when you do it often or on playback you can tell the difference and the reduced memory usage went from 67 to 59 megabytes as reported by blender <laughs> disclaimer <laughs> if blender claims it we believe it okay so the next um improvement also on curves this is an optimization that makes a curve that, for example, had about 8 attributes. The time for conversion in a test went from 55 to 14 milliseconds. That's much, much faster. And 
the profile when the profile of a curve is a single point, but the curves aren't polycurves, we can evaluate main point attributes directly in the mesh attribute. And this test with eight attributes on a curve, the time went from 3.7 milliseconds to 1.6. Wow, nice. Much less than, than half. More than twice as fast. Nice. And there's three comments about the same change. Well, not the same, but around the same area. Again, related to calculating curves. This time, another change went from 34.4 milliseconds to 14.7. Again, more than twice fast. When calculating tangents, normals, and their radius. The radii. I never know how to pronounce radii. Like the plural of radius. Can someone in the chat write how would you say radii? <laughs> in a way that I can read it in Spanish. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, another one and the last change in performance related with performance on um, curves. It's about memory and saves time copying the data from okay this is related with geometry nodes but it's set on the curves actually there is a section on the geometry node section we're going to cover more of this but it's good to see that it's getting faster and faster especially when this will be used for like physics or all when it, because curves are now used for hair right so this is much much welcome before moving into cycles, we are going to see how do you pronounce it. Radii I. Radii I. Radii I. Oh, so you do say the I at the end. Interesting. Radii I. Speaking of moving, cycles. Okay, cycles has a bunch of changes, some performance, some rendering. Um, changes. Let's see them together. I haven't actually seen these ones before. Make light UV available for the texture coordinate node. This is one is by Bison. The input socket of the image texture node is connected with the UV output of texture coordinate by default. The later reads the geometry UV, which is not available for lights because they have no real geometry. The current implementation simply retrieves the UV from shader data of a light. Lights now have UVs. What? Oh yeah, because because maybe they they react as a UV sphere as a as a as a sphere now as a mesh light. Interesting. Another change by Weizen enable normal transformation of lights in the vector transform node. This is added so that some texture pipeline with point lights and spotlights could work as before. Some people use the normal socket from the texture coordinate node for texturing light. Yeah, to to position it. However, the normal there is actually the incoming light direction and should be corrected using the parametric. Oh, you can actually see the cursor now. Yes, this has been fixed somehow by not using my computer for three weeks. Cool. Using the parametric socket from the geometry node plus normal transform from the world to object with Vex transform node delivers the same results as using the normal socket from the texture coordinate. Okay, for more consistency. Let's see if in the pull request we can see an image load here. Vector transform normal is now similar to how light is going to work on cycles. Neat. The next change by Lucas Stockner is the one, the following. Disable and use closure types when baking a specific component. What is this? Performance. Yes, this reduces the baking time and the noise. So not only performance, but nicer renders, nicer bakes when baking individual components of complex materials. Nice. So it would use existing filter logic to disable glossy and transmission closures. Yay for better bakes. Um, next. Cycles. Increase, increase the compute model for the PTX kernel. What does it mean? Newer 
NVIDIA graphics cards need this for the CUDA kernel and for to be optimized and be ready for future optimizations. It should help performance of the future cards when running older Blender and maybe will allow to perform just-in-time optimization faster. I like the maybe, maybe, just in case. Um, if you look at the at, at the code change, it's fairly, uh, it's, it's not much. Actually, you can see that just one more compute type was added. So yeah, just, just future proofing. Oh, this is an actual change that is going to make your renders look different. Why? Because point lights in cycles are no longer point lights unless you make them really tiny. Why? Well, point lights are now going to be rendered like like a sphere light and that has the benefit of being able to make a sphere light <laughs> and not just a point because if, if you think about it a point light is a sphere that is very tiny that tiny down to the point that like no radius so the renders are going to look slightly different here you can see the difference the um, mesh a mesh light when you get a sphere and you make it emit is the it looks like the following a bit noisy because it's a it's a mesh and the light will look the same if it has the same radius as the mesh light but it is going to clean much faster the previous behavior will look like yeah you couldn't you couldn't make it look like an actual sp sphere light so this is, this is pretty neat although it is going to change how your renders looks by default so be aware of that but it's blender 4.0 it is allowed to make renders look slightly different although i wonder if because if the behavior stays the same when the radius is zero i wonder if it just no, but then it will change how renders look anyway. So yeah, I don't I don't know if there is an, an easy way to make it look um, how it used to be, but this also looks should make it uh, much better with um, EV. So nice double sided sphere lights. Well, this makes EV lights also um, shine inwards. <laughs> And I think at some point we'll have to rename the lights um, from point light to sphere light because that's what it is. And it would make sense, I guess. Um, the next change, also by Bison, says remove clamping of area lights at small spread angles. There's still artifacts at, at extremely small angles, but should be unnoticeable due to improved accuracy. Nice. But there was a limit of how small the spread angles could be. Not anymore. Well, they're yeah, not anymore because the they won't look as ugly anymore. Well, um, cycles remove redundant bound checks in CPU image sampling for repeat extend mirror mode. Both wrap and red clip functions did the bounds check, removing it improved performance between 0.5 and 1.5 percent in the classroom classroom scene in one test cool nice so by doing nothing this should be slightly faster isn't it great uh somebody uh when blender 3.6 was released uh, right away on on twitter someone replied to the thread saying like hey i just rendered in 3.5 and then in 3.6 nothing changed but the race is faster so, cycles is faster so thank you <laughs> That's so cool. Um, okay, the um, last change in cycles related to cycles is remove redundant bound checks in CPU image. Okay, I, this is what I just said. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> focus, Pablo. Focus. The um, it's time to move to geometry in general. Geometry in general. So for mesh, there are some changes for attributes also. The geometry node section is going to be part of the node section, the N part. So first, removals. It's Blender 4.0. Some things are going to be... There is some spring cleaning going on, even though it's summer here. The face map 
feature has been removed. This has been planned for a while, but it is time to remove it because um, it was implemented very ad hoc, very, very like it was very specific. It was it was very technical also and not very um, generic right now. Right nowadays, Blender has generic attributes that are related to maps. They can have integers that attributes for for faces. So they they are you could you could you could implement them more um, gener in a more generic way. This has been removed. If you use it, you will have to do some. Uh, well, but what, what do you use it for? Because no one, I have never seen anyone outside of the Blender Studio people when this was implemented like a, forever ago that has used this feature. And it was very technical, yeah. But yeah, it's gone. It is gone. It will come back in like when people actually give it some use <laughs> <clears throat> the next change mesh remove unnecessary mesh copy mesh position copying so performance improvements in hair dynamics there were some copying shrink wrap remesh normal projection multi-res modifier reshape from object and vertex weight proximity modifier apparently they were all performing some copying when it wasn't necessary, so performance improvement. Move the vertex and edge crease to generic attributes. This was one of the last... I think I say this all the time, but <laughs> this must be one of the last few changes that, of, that, that makes the specific attributes like vertex or edge crease on their meshes be now completely generic so they will show up in the same list as the in the dope sheet and in the same list as the other attributes so yay for unifying stuff i wonder if there is any performance improvement note this is a breaking change forward compatibility is in preserve for versions before 3.6 so yeah i need to go full screen on this one because you need to know that blender 3.6 will be able to open files for Blender 4.0 but before that Blender 3.5 won't be able to open you will get um, I think Blender 3. Point, for Blender 3.3 because it's an LTS there will be a warning and it might be able to open I need to double check that might be able to open files from Blender 4.0 and or onwards the um, because they are LTS releases, so some changes have been done on those versions or will be done for those versions that will let you know that, hey, this file is from the future. You're going to, if you save your file, you're going to lose data because mesh attributes are different in 3.3 and 3.6 than they are in 4.0. However, I think we all know by now, we're all grown-ups, we know that if you are using 3.6 or 3.3, stick with that version until you're ready, until your production is over, your project is over, and then start afresh in a new version, like 4.0 and onwards. All right, time to go back. Back in time. Back to the future. That's a feature. You know, it's been 38 years since Back to the Future came out. Crazy. The other change, Forward compatibility with generic crease in 4.0. The and again, this is related to the previous previous change. By the way, all the links to everything that I'm reading is in the description. They are not individual links um, anymore for this one week because I had to gather everything from the release notes that the developers share on the Dev Talk forums. There's only four links. Okay, next. UV editing. Improve layout when alpaca packer is tighter is tighter than slow packers. <laughs> how do you how, how is it? When alpaca is tighter than the slow packers, improve the layout. When packing the largest islands, if the alpaca turns out to be <laughs> I, the alpaca packer. 
I, I can only imagine an alpaca. If you don't know what an alpaca is, it's like a llama. It's just cuter than a llama, I think, because it's, they're they're smaller, they're fluffier. Uh, they, they're just uh, uh, just amazing. So yeah, this is an alpaca. That's why it's it's funny to read alpaca, which is different from Awanaco from Caminandes. They're different. They're cousins. Okay, next. The change is um, yeah. Basically, better layouts. I'm so happy to see on the announcement videos of Blender 3.6 LTS how much people are enjoying the updates in the UV Packer, in the new UV Packing Engine in Blender 3.6. So nice to see people happy about UV. And that it was made largely by Chris Blackburn, by Brex Van Lomo, by people from the from the Blender team at large. But as always, those people are funded via the Blender Development Fund. So just a little hint. And thanks to everybody who's been subscribing to the to the development fund. This number uh, for Blender 3.5, well, I think it was nearly, I think it was near 3,000, and now is 3,200 and more. So thanks everyone. And you notice that the website looks slightly different now. It has a as a different UI has hopefully something a bit more clear and more easy to understand and uh, but yeah we made that change like the day before the release or something like we wanted to to greet everyone with a nicer looking website okay the next um, change also related to performance in mesh the copying of vertex this oh, vertex dust map <laughs> um anyway this has been improved how much faster it is well the execution time for different operations was reduced from 267 milliseconds to 261 so 2.3 percent in overall performance tiny performance improvement but every bit helps moving on to attributes still in the geometry side of uh, geometry section of this episode there is a new quaternion rotation type for attributes. Add a quaternion attribute type that will be used in combination with rotation sockets for geometry nodes to give a more intuitive experience and better performance when using rotations or in, other than the single or the, the vector uh, or the single rotation with uh, just the one angle. So that's nice to hear. The most interesting part is probably the interpolation. The rest is the same as the last attribute type addition. We need to interpolate multiple values with different weights. Based on several suggestions, this uses the xmap methods from another commit. Um, oh, something that Clement added time ago. Nice. So there are three commits related to this. Support quaternion attribute in the spreadsheet. Support drawing quaternion attributes. Row filter remain unimplemented. Cool. Yeah, quaternions, yeah, they, are, they are more than just three values for rotations. There are four values. Quad, quaternions. So they have to be drawn differently. There is another attribute, the W, XYZ, W. And last but not least, add identity default value for quaternion type. What is the default value? one <laughs> all right um well here because we are in the letter g i will talk about gris pencil 3.0 and there are several good news to share one is that one of the developers of the gris pencil uh, team amelie is here it's at the studio uh, it's here on a two month um stay for like he actually works at a studio in france but he's moving for two months at least at the here at the blender studio to work together with folk and well, the rest of the Blender developers in the Chris pencil 3.0 project which as we know it's going to be one, one of the biggest uh, projects to be in blender 4.0 because um it's rewriting Chris pencil from scratch to be more like curves and that involves so much rewriting like how much rewriting well 
um, the team has been busy adding like selection operators, <laughs> like the, the most, the, the minimum. Um, well, at this point, of course, because the project started not that long ago, uh, like in full force, the project started long ago. It was discussed at the Blender conference last year, but just, just a few weeks ago, months ago, the team is now together working on it full time. So there's a lot of the basic ones. If you read them, it's like select ants operator. However, there is also new stuff. There is a layers, the new layer um, user interface for, for layers, um, but also layer groups. And I should add some clapping for this. Even though it's it's experimental, it's kind of a big deal. So clapping, clapping. What are layer groups? Well, let's. Um, I, I'm actually I was mentioning it, but if since it's announced here, let's let's see it in action. Again, today is a special episode. It's gonna be a bit longer, but let's let's go deep into what is new. Grease Pencil 3.0, once it's enabled from the experimental section in the preferences, should be available as soon as you as, as you add an object, like a Grease Pencil object. Let's see a stroke here, object, Grease Pencil object, and let's select it. Okay, selecting is also a bit broken, I think. But hey, layers. This UI looks familiar, maybe a bit. However, there is a Thing here that says add group and this is a grease pencil layer group at the moment it doesn't seem to do anything i can't click on it i can't drag and drop anything i can't right I, I can't i can double click and rename it let's see if it works yeah it works um but that that's that's about it i can't i can't drag and drop things in it so uh, stay with us the team is working really hard but hey groups are coming Experimental, very experimental. Do not use this in production or any anything. Well, even if you try to use it, you can't. You won't be able to because you can you can barely see anything. So, um, so exciting though. Layer groups, something people have been asking forever. Um, the next section is uh, nodes. We're going to talk about nodes. The oh wow, new noise, nice. Noise. Fractal Voronoise. Voronoi. Noise. Oh, wow. There. I haven't seen any new noise implementations in so long. So, Hoshinova has implemented this pull request, which is a continuation of another pull request in the back in the old website that has some pictures here. So it should have more detail. I wonder what's different. Is there like a comparison, like a before and after? I mean, it must be fabric patterns. This looks pretty neat. Unpainted wall. So this is using the new textures. I want to see a before and after. Okay, so again, let, let's maybe read about it. Let's read about it. Again, today's special. I'm learning about this with you. Fractal noise is the idea of evaluating the same noise function multiple times with different input parameters on each layer and then mixing the results. The individual layers are usually called octaves. The number of layers is controlled via a detail slider. The lacunarity input controls a factor by which each successive layer gets scaled. The existing node already no, uh, noise node already supports fractal noise. Now the voter noise node supports its ads as well. Nice. The node also has a new normalized property that ensures that the output value stays in a zero to one range. That is except for the F2 feature where in rare cases the output may be outside that range even with the normalized turn on. So how do the how the individual octaves are mixed depends on the feature and the output socket. There are some notes about it here for the F1 smooth, F1, F2, 
distance to edge and the position output settings. It should be noted though that the Voronoise no Voronoi <laughs> Voronoise <laughs> I keep calling it it kinda works. It Voronoi noise. We could just shorten it. Voronoise. It's a relatively slow noise function, especially at higher dimensions. Fractals, I guess. Increasing the detail makes it even slower. Therefore, when optimizing a scene, one should consider trying to use simpler noise functions instead of Voronoi in the final result. If the final result is close enough. Uh, but, but that's a recommendation not only for the Voronoi, <laughs> but for the... Yeah, for in, in general. If you if you don't see the detail, just lower the detail, the iterations, everything is going to make your renders much faster. So Ed H here says, should should it be called Voronoise? Yes, I agree. I think it would be a good good thing to do. <laughs> we still we still have time. <laughs> okay, next nodes. Panel declarations for grouping sockets. Adds an optional list. Wait. Adds an optional list of panels to node trees. Each socket can be assigned a panel. UI panels will be created in the future in the modifier for these grouped sockets. Panels are stored as pointer array. Okay. Um, sockets in the same panel will remain together even when adding, removing, or moving sockets as or panels rename, renaming, etc. A socket can be moved up or down within a panel, but each panel remains a continue, contiguous block. Actual tree views may be created later. So you're telling me I can have panels in Geometry Nodes modifier now? Let's see. New feature. Node panels, yes. It's an experimental setting. Node panels, it's enabled. So now let's let's see this is completely unexpected i didn't know this feature was already in oh but it's added as a new panel or node panels okay so panel one let me add an input and this input ah you can choose the panel from each input and then this will show up here right if this is connected to anything. Hmm. No, I don't see the panel. Let's add another panel. This is going to be panel 2. And let's add an output to the panel 2. Okay, I don't see it reflected. Maybe I'm too... It is whip. It's only the initial data structure that is included so far, says Hans. Okay, so it's just the UI basically? Or the data structure? If it's just the data structure, we could just not have a UI for it. Um, but I think there was a task that I've seen with uh, Dalai, because we, we discussed this with Dalai some time ago, um, before NSC, I think, or Reform 3.6 that a tree view would be a uh, better suit for this. So you have everything in one, uh, yeah, one panel, even inputs and outputs in the same panel together with the node panel. The initial UI says Hans has one of the developers of the node, uh, node and physics module. There will be a tree view in 4.0 ideally. We still have two months of Beacon 1 and then another one or more of Beacon 2. So let's keep our fingers crossed. But yeah, this um, this will allow, this is amazing if, if when implemented, because it would allow this kind of panels for organization in geometry nodes, which is something people are being, uh, have been asking for a while because they you can see their setups, they have like this kind of things where they yeah where they where they try to to make ui with what they have so it would be it would be super nice once that is done awesome all right so uh speaking of geometry nodes now we that we have one of the developers here and this first feature is from m we 
will be seeing it first, first hand. Um, speed up multi-threading for sample nearest surface in some cases. So the sample nearest surface node is now slightly faster from 2.3 to 2.5 frames per second and reduces the gaps in a profile where the CPU was waiting for just a few threads to finish the VVH3 lookup. So better multi-threading, always welcome. The next change is by Lucas Tone, clear the cache bake directory when duplicating a modifier. Oh, yeah, this is more like a fix. We've probably made it to 3.6. Um, otherwise, duplicating the modifier would come with some things inside already. Um, next, also by hands, add rotation socket type support in many nodes. What I just mentioned before in the nodes section, this adds a quaternion rotation socket type and using the recently added rotation attribute type, support the type in most of the multi-type geometry nodes and modifier attribute inputs and outputs so we should see it i guess in the type yeah we can set it to rotation Ooh, pink interesting choice but the rotation um socket is pink and it looks like this he has three inputs and it make it rot quaternion I guess if I connect something that has four. Interesting. Feel free to choose a better color. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's not about a better color, is that I I um am thinking I mean it's close to vec to, it's close to a vector. Similar in that same Q family. So um cool, awesome, nice. The um, next, um, okay, for now the new socket is hidden behind an experimental option because we haven't really chosen the final color for it yet. Oh, it's an experimental setting, or maybe this commit is old. Oh, rotation socket is here, and uh, okay, okay, it is experimental. If you don't see it on your blender, it is experimental. The next change. It's on performance. Avoid costly index lookup for from index index mask in a few nodes. The attribute statistic nodes becomes five times better. So faster or just better? Which is faster? <laughs> Due to multi-threading. The extrude phase individual has an average change of or improvement between from 42 to 36 milliseconds. The duplicate element phases in average went from 220 milliseconds to 150 milliseconds and the transform instances average went from 12 milliseconds to 8 milliseconds. Other nodes have approximately the similar improvement numbers and all the tests use a random 50% selection as a mask. So performance improvements by Ilya. Thank you Ilya for working on performance. Another one by Ilya makes the duplicate elements phase mode faster, about 30% faster. Nice. The next change by Jack says, make evaluation and logging system aware of zones. Is this, is this for more under the hood stuff? Now a separate laser function is built from every zone, which gives us much more flexibility what ha can happen in a zone. Okay, so yeah, this is this is more under the hood. We'd, we'd likely working under the hood for more things to come. Move simulation panel higher in the node editor sidebar. Swap the simulation sockets panel and node sockets properly properties panels to change the default panel order to make it easier to edit the list. Nice. Nice one. UI change. There must be a picture here. So Oh yeah. They were now they are in the higher up. Ooh, another one by hands, a big one. Node group operators initial 
face. This is this is a big one. I didn't know it was already in mass in main. This PR adds a new operator to run a node group on object geometry. Only cur only curves sculpt mode is supported for now to simplify the design until things get more stable i assume a new geometry node editor context to edit the operator groups is also added this allows changing any node group rather than only node groups that are part of the active modifier context this is huge so what is this what does it mean well it's exactly what what it sounds like an operator in blender it's well everything is an operator in blender every operation you like i don't know extrude your mesh uh inset whatever those are operators like mesh operators but now geometry nodes like a whole modifier can be run as an operator which just like yeah that this is huge how, how does it even work like the the settings of a node group do they show up on the on the adjust op last operation settings would make sense it's so cool this is okay this is very early work in progress but a, a huge one for 4.0 for blender 4.0 because it means that many of the mesh operators that we're doing nowadays with i don't know maybe python which is not the fastest thing on earth could be replaced with geometry node operators that come built in blender which do uh, which are more performant in general but also they allow you to do all kinds of crazy Wow. Yeah, I'm just thinking of the possibilities. So cool. Thanks, Hans. Well, and the rest of the team for working on this. I didn't know it was already. I, I knew it was a big thing because for for hair or well, I don't know. Just just huge. Okay, next. Um add mixed node support for the rotation socket. Add support for the new rotation socket data type to a mix node rotation socket available only in geometry nodes right now the list of supported types for the node depends on the on node tree type cool and last change in geometry nodes add nested node ids and use them for simulation state simulation state used by simulation nodes is owned by the modifier since a Geometry node setup can contain an arbitrary number of simulations. The modifier has a mapping from simulation zone ID. This path changes what is used for the simulation zone ID. So again, under the hood, huge commit though. 400 lines of code. But no user level changes as far as I can see. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see what is what else is new in the user interface side of things. Um, remove duplicate separators in the property editor tabs. Yep, um, this is a small one you maybe never noticed, but some <laughs> some of the tabs had a double separator. Very hard to notice, but this has been fixed by Guillermo. Thank you, Guille, Guille, for working on this. The next change is in the text editor. Add a custom text editor preference also by Guillermo. Yeah, this is, this is awesome. So, um, for example, Blender has many ways to edit uh, text, right? You, If you have developer extras enabled and you are in the text uh, and you are somewhere in Blender with developer extras, you can, for example, right click, edit source, and it will open the ui in the text editor the blender's text editor however maybe you don't like blender text editor maybe you use something else like visual studio code vs code well you can now set in your preferences under interface editors is it here <laughs> where was it um i thought it was here okay because i was following this um, where is it in the custom editor can be set in the user preference yes but where let's luckily we can look at the code and see where has this has been added so startup blui space user preferences 
in text editor presets in the uh, in ah, in applications in file paths yeah system system file paths applications text editor you can set which program you can load a like the, the path to the program and then have a arguments for example whatever arguments like that those things that you do slash dash something else um the preset setting he has two one is the internal one which is just the regular one but also has visual studio code uh set by default using some of the i mean some of these are not always going to work i don't i don't know if if i run code if it will open yeah for example here in my setup it doesn't code doesn't work so i would rather give it like user being something something um nice and this will be used for the text editor unless you set it to internal which is going to clear things out awesome oh and there is a new let's see if this made it mm, no okay there was an operator that it was plan oh yeah edit externally if ah, uh, maybe if i don't have anything set up so okay if i set visual studio code then I can edit externally. This is also a new a new setting where you can edit a file that you're working on here directly on your preferred um, text editor. Cool. Nice. Tetrapixel. Awesome. I, though I hope it works with any VS Code alternatives. Yes, it works with any... It, like, it should work with any anything. It's like you, you set the path. You literally set the path and this is these are the variables that you can use file path line and column so it, it should work with any video any text editor um that's why one at least one um editor is added as an example but you can also add your own you can you can type whatever you want here and then save that as a new preset and you will have it there um Okay, what else? Oh, removal. Remove support for syntax highlighting Lua. Remove because support for languages which Blender itself doesn't support seems unnecessary. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, Blender doesn't support Lua, so it makes sense to not have syntax highlighting. Um, at least as a way to communicate that it's not supported, right? Otherwise, we could just add support for highlighting everything, right? HTML, CSS, everything. Um, it's is it's. I think it's a good good way to tell the user like, hey, we don't support that value. That's that, but it works for your OSL, Python, and all the good ones. All the good ones, all the support ones. Hey, I'm not saying those else are not good. Supported ones. Um. Next, transform, remove. Indication of the transform snap base. What is this? Oh, the indicator. This commit removes oh removes the transform snap base symbol Y target and displays only the untransformed snap base symbol X. Then confirming the snap base edit operation. The usefulness of the Y target icon representing the transform snap base is debatable since it represents the snap target itself. During the move operation or the direction between the pivot and the snap target during the rotation operation. Having multiple symbols on the screen can clutter the interface and may not be intuitive. This is uh, based on a discussion feedback from the community as well. More removals. Remove the current snap base in the sna set snap base mode. This is not UI. This should be in transform, actually. Why is it listed in the, in the user interface? I added there now, but I, I took it from the release notes. Having some matter to continue my being able to speak. Interesting. Okay. So the current snap base was available and displayed to allow snapping to edge perpendicular. However, the usefulness of perpendicular snapping in set snap base is questionable and can sometimes cause inconvenience. Also, removing the current snap base indicator 
makes the intention of the operation more apparent. That that's I agree with. Next, allow operation navigation for operators when called from a macro or a menu. So extrude and duplicate operators now support navigation. Nice. So if you extrude, you're extruding in the middle of a model operator like extruding, you can now support navigation. The one that I the one operator that I wish would support navigation, it's the C for uh, painting select. Now you can't because middle click is for this selection, but I think it should be like the same way that we do it in, in Blender, which is shift, right? Like just shift instead of middle click and then it should just support navigation. But the rest is a is super, super neat that we have this. Um, Another change, move the face nearest option, snap option, to another section. Which one? The snap mode called face nearest and the increment doesn't behave like the other snap modes. Unlike the other snap modes, face nearest does not act on a snap base. It's always It always acts on this origin of individually transformed elements. So this commit makes the following changes. Snap width was moved to the beginning of the popover. Makes sense. Align rotation to target and back face. Cullen have been moved closer to the snap targets. Snap width, target selection and align rotation to target are no longer hidden by varying the mode and the options. That's good because they make that makes it more discoverable if they are not hidden by default. Project individual elements has been replaced with the face project option. The face nearest has been moved to stick together with the face project options. Nice. Again, face nearest and face project being closer makes so much sense. Okay, in the curve side of things, there is a one change by Folk. Renaming. Add separate start and end amounts for the select ends operator. Replaces the properties with an amount start and amount end. So you can set how much you want to select at the beginning and at the end of a curve. Neat. This is an actual user interface change. Draw tree view hover highlight even when emboss is disabled. No user visible changes. Okay. <laughs> it's an actual user interface, but no user visible changes. I, I thought it would though, because it was hover highlighting, but okay. The um, tree view is the one that is going to be used by the Gris Pencil 3 in the uh, layer groups. Okay, so Damien and Hans have been working on improving layout, various layout improvements. One, group the mirror X and Y under a heading, similarly to do the same for even on odd tiles. Oh yeah, this is this is a very small one. But mirror X and Y was so weird like this when we usually use the tiles or like a heading for mirror and then both of them. So again, those small details that are always nice to see, at least for me, I love it when they, when they happen. I have a huge list. I can't wait to, <laughs> to go back to normal. First, we have to prepare the sales for the, for the Blender conference. But after that, I want to focus on Blender 4.0 and I have a to-do list like this big of the small proposals that I want to make and some actually some things that I want to like actually code myself because they are very small. Um, but yeah, looking forward to having time for that. And this has to do with the user use property split for the geometry nodes modifier bake path. Ah, just unifying the user interface. Hmm. Transform snap. Again, more changes in transform in the user interface, but this is not related to user interface. Why was it grouped like this? Improve snap for bones. In order to better identify which is the normal of the point, it is interesting to identify which is the closest bone. So instead of testing the snap at each point and then each bone line, test the bone lines first and after identifying the closest one. Test is, now oh, after it's identified, test the points. Need. Another one related to snap 
Support align rotation to target for bone points. Oh, nice. You can actually align rotation to target on bones. Align with the bone that it, the point is part of. Cool. Awesome. That is actually quite a big one. And next, change the UV packing pin option into a toggle and a drop down. This one by Campbell says the following. Exposing both the option to not use pin islands and to skip the pin islands in the same drop down was confusing. That, that is true. A nice catch, Campbell. Now there is a checkbox for the pinning when it's disabled and pin UVs don't have any options, any impact when the packed, when, uh, sorry, on the packed result. When enabled, the pin method selects how pin islands are handled. Also remove the ignore options. Yeah, absolutely. Huge improvement. Well, huge. UI improvement, less confusing. We shouldn't have a drop down option for don't do this and do this. Don't do this or do this, it's a boolean, right? It should be a checkbox. Next, resolve inconsistency with modifier labels while assigning shortcuts. Oh, okay, more consistency changes. Reuse the same label to match. It would show, oh, ah, it wasn't showing common CMD on, it was, it was showing CMD on Linux instead of uh, control. On Linux, we have control as opposed to the Mac that has CMD for command. Well, Mac also has control and command, which is a bit confusing. <laughs> Next change, also related to actual user interface changes. Transparency check checkerboard behind file browser thumbnails. Oh, this is so nice. So, um, ever notice when you have transparent images in the file browser, you would see the background of the file browser. But transparency in Blender everywhere, it's represented with a checkerboard, which you can even theme. In case you didn't know, you can change the color of the theme. This one is um, such a small detail, but makes things more unified, more consistent. Thank you, Harley, for working on this. Another tiny one. Replace X with multiplication sign when displaying calculations. Yeah, because the, the like 1920 by 1080, the, the by, the X, it was, yeah, it was using the X letter, not the X symbol. It's, it is different, it is different. You can see in the screenshots, it is slightly different. <laughs> it's quite different, actually. The X is an actual X in the symbol, like the same length. It's not skewed like the X letter. Okay. Um, use a factor for sculpt mask, extract factor property. Makes it easier to adjust the property visually. Oh, this wasn't, it was just a float value, and now it's an actual factor for the mask extract property. Again, also a user interface change, but it makes sense. The, that is a factor, that is a, the blue bar that fills up. Next, we move to from user interface to V for viewport, and all right, this is this is big. Transform. Well, it's big for me. It this is one of the things that completely breaks my muscle memory, but I know I'm I, I might be the uh, weird one, but I was using. Okay, so the feature is allow navigation while transform by default. This was a setting added some weeks ago that would allow you to basically while you're transforming, so press G to move something or R to rotate or S to scale, that it would allow you to rotate the view, move around while transforming. So it's much easier to show it basically. So you press G to move and then you can zoom in, go and carry your cube around even if you're just moving around. This is this is great. This is great. People have been asking for this for years. But I am um, I'm one of the weird ones that was actually using alt click to 
to constraint. Uh, sorry, I was using middle click to constraint, but because middle click is used for rotation, the shortcut is now changed to alt middle click. So it's it's not that big of a deal, but I, I was using this very often. I, I, I bet I, I'm already getting used to just by demoing this thing. I was, I'm already getting used to, <laughs> to this. So yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I will get used to it. I got used to 2.4 to 2.5 going from vertical, no, from horizontal layouts to vertical layouts. I can handle that. Let me know if this also affects your muscle memory. Next change. Show snap base when adding multiple snap points. Okay, this is also listed under viewport. Sorry, but sometimes the, the release notes uh, on, the, on the dev talk are built by different people. Or maybe I screwed up, but they the categories sometimes differ a bit. Um, this is also related to snap base. I should have added to the snap base section. Anyway, um, show the snap base when adding multiple snap points. So it will show the original base when adding multiple points. Nice for usability. And last but not least, the performance has been improved when using um, snapping. Since snapping to endpoints is already done when you snap two edges together, there is no need to create a VVH3 with all the vertices. These um, also uses the appropriate endpoint definition from snap for snap to armature. So performance improvements, memory. So what's the chat saying? Yes, this affects my workflow so much. Majid, same here, Pablo. <laughs> okay, I was go I was doing that as well. Yeah, <laughs> yep. There there is a few people that we were doing that. I hope there will be an option to turn it off. Um, there used to be an option, but I don't think there will be. There is an option anymore. Let's look at together. Key map. And uh, nope. No, there used to be an option. The option has been removed. It used to be an option. But you know, it kind of kind of makes sense. Although it has to be. It kind of makes sense because with with Alt. Um, when you are rotating and you hold Alt, you can snap to to the to the sides. I don't know if you notice if you if you knew this one. Alt, middle click, drag. You can move into different um, axes. So it is related to use while transforming to trans to to. It's consistent in a way, and it's consistent that you can rotate and move around. However, again, there are some tools. Okay, so. I, Let's look at the extrude. I can extrude. Oh, nice. This this is cool. Come on. Extruding and rotating at the same time. Or moving around. Zooming in and out. And continuing. This wasn't possible before. <laughs> okay. After a while, it gets a bit weird. Because my center of rotation was down there. So, I guess we need to... For this to work well, maybe we will have to um, also change the orbit around selection. Let's see how this one works. So let's go to here. Now I have orbit around selection enabled. Oh, this is much better. Yeah, yeah, it makes much more sense to have the orbit around selection setting on now that we can move while extruding or performing some changes. Yeah. Do so you think that the orbit around selection should be on by default or not? Let us know in the comments below. Okay. Um, That was it for the viewport. Let's uh, talk a bit about... Okay, we have three more sections. Well, two more sections officially. Video Sequence Editor and the Python API. Um, but there's also some oh, even next things that are fun to talk about. Let's let's go quickly through the Video Sequence <laughs> Editor changes. The um, retiming tool, which, by the way, the retiming tool was 
supposed to be in 3.6, but it has been removed. If you are using 3.6, you may know uh, already. But yeah, it was supposed to be there and it was removed three weeks ago because it's, the UI is not... It, it will change. The UI will be will be improved. It has some some things that are a bit weird and we wouldn't be feel confident in releasing 3.6, which is an LTS support for two years. So imagine having an ugly, not ugly, and less than ideal UI for a tool that is new, but you know you're going to change re soon for two years. So better to just not have it not have it there and do it properly for 4.0. Um, but yeah, um, this tool has been improved with two uh, commits. One, ensure that, re that the retiming handle at this, at the, at the, on the right handle is added because if you would split a strip, it would be hard to add a new retiming handle to the end of it. Now this has been fixed. And the, my favorite change related to this was that the retiming tool in 3.7, let's, let's go to the video editing section. Let's add a video here, just as a demo. Um, yeah, so the retiming tool, retime, this tool where it, it was great, but it wasn't possible. Wait, wait, why can I? Okay, this is also not great. That if you if like if how do I add a handle? I need to be on the frame and then add a handle. Uh, yeah, so if you wanted to set a this to be 50%, you will have to drag it and then exactly be at the 50% mark, which is not always easy to do with different sized strips. But now you can click on it and set the speed with a lot of detail with three decimals um yeah this is this is awesome maybe we shouldn't we, we don't need to have all the decimals displayed by default of course you can add you can type them in but maybe it doesn't need to be there and we should add a percentage factor to this because it is a percentage um i assume so one is or not wait no this is 76% of the speed. Yeah, yeah, this 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 has to have a otherwise it looks like speed of 1 which would be real time. Anyway, we need to fix this. We need to add a percentage fact uh, symbol there and also maybe add a shortcut. On DaVinci Resolve, I know they use the letter R which it is very convenient. I don't know in other software, what, what do they use in... Like, if we are going to add a shortcut, might as well use something that the industry is using, right? So what is the shortcut for setting the speed of a strip in other popular software, like Premiere or Final Cut? Next. Um, that's it. Python API. There is a few commits on Python API. I'll try to go as fast as I can. Um, make the F-curve update did also the duplicate keys, but this was actually, oh. Oh, this was one of the remains for 4.0 because it changes how things uh, work. The F, the update um, operator now will work differently than 3.6, so keep this in mind. Then, assets. There is two changes related to assets. One, remove the deprecated parameter in the asset path query. This parameter was deprecated and ignored for a while, removing this as part of the breaking changes for 4.0 in the asset system. New, add an option to copy asset data from one ID to another. Cool, so you can... Okay, this is like example code. If you have one source and one destination, you can say destination asset mark, so mark as asset, and then set asset data to source data. That's so cool. That makes it so easy to transfer asset attributes from one to another. Nice. Nice one. If you're making add-ons related to assets or distributing assets, this one you may want to write down. 
Um, okay. Two more comments. One, add animation playback. Oh, cool. Pre-post handlers. Yes, who doesn't like handlers? Everything. I saw a right-click select <laughs> um, proposal that says everything should have handles. And I agree, everything. We should, like, we have render handles, open handles. Now there is playback handles. So this is a little notifier that is going to um, get triggered before and after playback. So you can do changes. Yeah, uh, like playback, make a change. Oh, you could do like simplify things. You could have like a, like hide certain assets or, or lower the quality of your assets on playback. You could do that with Python now. Nice. I mean, you can make, you have to make your own UI, but that, that, that makes, have some ideas for cool add-ons. Okay, next. Um, don't allow animation for node mute property. Oh, you could animate the mute, the mutability. <laughs> Discussions on this pull request pointed to the idea that the mute property probably shouldn't have been animatable to begin with because of performance concerns. This simply removes the ability to animate the property. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um. All right, that is all for this week. In, some people were asking about EV Next, so just to let you know that EV Next is moving, just like Clema, the main developer of EV, has moved to the Netherlands. Here is actually next door. He's probably listening to what I'm saying. If he will hear clearly, <laughs> like put his ear against the wall. Um, it's amazing. We have more people thanks to Blender Development Fund and support from the community. We can bring people at the Blender HQ to make things uh, faster, go faster. So um, we need Miguel now here. This uh, change on EVNX was by Miguel. He implemented subsurface scattering in EVNX. So, so cool. This was ported from the EV rewrite branch from Clement but, uh, to EV Next. So nice. Next, Irradiance Cache by the one and only Clement Foucault. He added initial implementation and a full rewrite of the Irradiance volume baking, which is now much faster and it doesn't scale linearly with the number of Irradiance samples in the volumes. Neat. What else has been added? Ambient occlusion node and the render has have been added by Miguel Pozo. Thank you, Miguel. World irradiance caching has been added by Jeroen Bakker. Also, this PR adds world lighting to the irradiance cache and allows diffuse materials to be lit by the world. The scene in the reference image is only lit by an environment texture. So let's look at this reference. Ooh, can you believe this? This render is EV next lit only by environment lights nothing else no lights were involved in this other than the environment the world light cool and related to the world as well also by Yurun. world reflective light this pr adds world probe baking to evnx the world is baked to a cube map and is used for reflective light in the deferred render pass it's baked to a resolution of 2k by 2k is uh, in the future this will become a user facing setting but wasn't considered essential for the first implementation neat let's see if there is a picture nice even next it looks so next awesome but that's not the only next because workbench next has also been worked on by miguel and this commit add support for hair and curves support to the new draw manager the sculpt mode support has been added as well for the workbench next. So exciting to see how fast EV next, overlay next, workbench next, grease pencil next. Also, like support for grease pencil in the notes, in the in the notes, in the in the viewport will be added. All right, I have arrived to the end of the list of everything that is new this week. 
I it's over one and a half hour. I don't think there will be time to for questions if people have made any. Let's yeah, 13 questions. I'm sorry, people. Uh should I like look at that? Why would you make such a big <laughs> question? Um And it's upvoted by these two accounts, which happen to be <laughs> made just before the show, which is one name. This, come on. And it's... <laughs> okay. Shall we leave them for next week? It's been one and a half hour. Sorry, but it's, it's uh, sh sharing questions from four weeks, three, four weeks more, because it was Annecy. Then two weeks for the release. Yeah, and the week before that. So uh, four weeks of updates. I think we um, we should wrap it up now. Sorry for the questions that I didn't get to answer. I know you will understand because it's been a special show. But we are back next week. I don't know about next week, actually. It all depends on something that happens tomorrow. It's related to a travel that I have, so I actually don't know how if I'm gonna be doing it next week. I I I will be maybe too far away or right here, depending on if a visa gets rejected or not, uh, related to some uh, training and at a university really really far away from where I am. Um, I don't want to jinx it, so that's why I'm not bringing it up. But I will let you know. Otherwise, we'll see to get we'll see each other on the week after, but I will let you know on the posts here on the Blender Foundation YouTube channel. Thank you so much for all your support, for waiting all this time. You know, you can actually, I mean, you don't have to watch the whole show. It's nice that you hang out. I also love hanging out here and making these videos, but you know that the developers are still putting out the same list that I've been going through today. They build it every week. They do it every week. Like religiously every Monday around 6 p.m. Uh, Central European time, the list gets wrapped up with everything that is new. So you can find that on code.blender.org. In the top left, you see a list of all the latest updates and the meeting notes and everything. I think um, development is, is really transparent. I, I am happy to see this confirmed. When I was in Barcelona last week for Penpot Fest, this conference that gets together people from design teams or, or in, in other open source projects in... Uh, well, this was the first year, but hopefully they will do it again next year. And if we're not that bad, but in terms of transparency and development and making things accessible. However, I was comparing our design team <laughs> with others such as I don't know, Red Hat and Fedora, like big next cloud or um, yeah, they we, we have a lot to improve. I hope we can build this year at some point a an actual design team, a community design team and the process that take that will take uh, community involvement in design areas in Blender to the next level. I am looking forward to that. Other than that, I think we can um, Keep an eye on where is going to be the next episode of Lender Today Live. But for sure, it's going to have questions. Sorry, I didn't get to answer them today. But uh, other than that, let's let's uh, let, let's use the, all the features that were added this week. Let's. I hope you 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 make you're making something fun with Blender these days. If you are not, maybe it's a good time to start. I will see you again next time, same place. Same time as every week or every other week or every other month in Blender Today Live. Watch your ear holes. I missed that. Thanks, everyone. I will see you again next time. Bye. Have a great week. Or two weeks. <laughs> Bye.